sorry for the change in voice. Um, we are continuing on. We are on number six. And the difference here is we no longer have a graph. So we are doing the exact same thing, but we are looking at the graph first. So all we're going to do is the same basic idea. The first step is we need to find the distance between the x's. How far apart are the x values? So to do that, we are going to look at our coordinates. We have point A is at negative 4, negative 1. We have point B is at 2, comma 7. So what I'm really looking at for the distance between the x's is I'm looking at how far apart are 2 and negative 4. So if you don't know, I mean, I can just quickly do a number line. Start at negative 4, and I go backwards. Negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0. My number line's not long enough. 1, 2. And how far apart are they? So let me go ahead and count that. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If you had a calculator, you would simply subtract those two numbers. Now, the sign of the number should be positive, because when I'm asking for a distance, a distance will always be a positive number. So step two is find the distance between the y's. And we're going to do the exact same thing. So I look at the y's. My y's are negative 1 and 7, and how far away is negative 1 from 7? That would be 8 units away. So once I have found the distance between the x's and the distance between the y's, the next thing I need to do is use Pythagorean theorem. And that's what we've been doing anyway. So we're going to have a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And it doesn't matter which one I put in for a or which one is I put in for b, as long as I know I'm solving for c. So I have 6 squared plus my b is 8 squared is equal to c squared. Now all I have to do is work out my arithmetic. 6 squared is 36. 8 squared is 64, which gives me 100, and then I take the square root of 100, which hopefully we know the square root of 100 is 10, which means the length of AB is 10. And again, that's how we're going to do it without a graph. Let's scroll down, I think that's all that's on that page, sorry. So now I'm going to move on to doing this with a graph turning the page. So we're using a graph now. So the only difference is I have to actually put these points onto my grid. So although it's silly and I know I don't like this graph paper, but this is the SOL graph paper, the first thing I need to do is on my graph paper, I need to draw in my x and y axis. So I have a coordinate plane to work with. So my x-axis, just go ahead and draw it in. If you want to use a ruler, you can. If you want to freehand it, you can. But make sure you stay on the same line. I'm going to go ahead and put a point right at the origin. So the next step is to plot A, which is at negative 4, negative 1, and label. So, negative 4, negative 1. I start at the origin, and I go left 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then negative 1 tells me from there to go down 1. So here is my A. Negative 4, negative 1. So it should make sense that my next step is to plot B and label it. So, I start back at the origin. And I'm going to count over 2 and up 7. And I label that B. Now, this next step is optional. So it's kind of like maybe step 4. You can draw in the segment. You don't have to. 
And if it makes you feel better, you can draw it in, but it's not required in any way, shape, or form for this problem. The next step is definitely needed. So from here, we're going to do our count up and count over from point A to point B. Again, write down what you need from that. If all you need to write down is count up and over, that's all you have to write down. If you want to write all of that, that's fine too. So I'm going to start at point A, and I'm going to count up till I'm even with B. I'm going to dash it over just so I know where to stop. So from point A again, I'm going to count up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to label it right there. So I counted up eight. From where I landed, I put an X where I landed, I'm going to count over to B. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. And I've created a black right triangle. So I've counted up, I've counted over. All I have left to do now is find my answer, and I'm going to do that with Pythagorean Theorem. So now I'm going to use Pythagorean Theorem. to find AB. So I will have 6 squared plus 8 squared equals C squared. Now I worked this out in the problem before and I know that I got 36 plus 64 equals C squared. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. That gives me 100 is equal to C squared. I take the square root of 100 which is 10. So the length of AB is simply 10. I'm going to scroll down. So here we have U try 6. So what I'd like for you to do right now is to pause the video and actually work this problem out. You have all the steps right above. Um, so go ahead and pause your video now, please. Okay, really pause the video if you didn't. Really actually pause the video now, please. Here is the solution to you try six. Any of these answers at the bottom are acceptable. Square root of 72, 8.485, or six times the square root of two. If you did not get that correct, please pause the video here and work that problem out. And moving on to number seven. So there are three ways to ask for length. They are, first way, the question you should say, find the distance between A and B, or find the distance between these two points. Another way would be to say, find the length. Okay, the distance between two points is actually the length of the segment. So that would be like finding the length of segment AB. The last way we can ask for this is if we just say find AB with no notation over top because no notation over top means that is a number. And here we have the three ways to leave your answer for length. We can leave it in square root form. Just put a square root right over that number and you can leave it alone. You can have it in decimal form. If you're going to do it, you must leave three decimal places and then cut the rest of the decimals off, which means you're truncating. I don't want you to round, so please don't round. Or we can leave it in simplest radical form if you recall how to do that from Algebra 1. And again, any of these three ways are acceptable. So please be sure and bring your questions to class, and I hope you have a wonderful evening.